after a pretty long time, like uh, literally four years. I'm finally publishing the update for AP Dispo, AP Dispo version 2, and this tool has been ready for a few years already, but I really wanted to make a proper video explaining the possibilities, what's changed, and overall like how I am using it myself. So yeah, AP Dispo from the beginning was just a basic Dispo tool based on Blink script code and what was quite special about it is that it lets you select a specific tone and then it will uh, perform the Dispo for that tone. So the way that's working um, is that the moment you choose this to be your green, it's kind of calculating what's the uh, color angle between that color and green. It's just performing a non-luminance aware, let's say, a hue rotation in that direction. Then once that's done, it kind of dispels this color here. And then it's just taking it back into position. So that was the concept of the uh, specific tone dispelling. And now I'm going to give a brief explanation of what exactly this pill is in this case. Uh, this is uh, an important piece of information for understanding version two, I think. So let's say for a specific pixel of the image, we might have these values more or less. So there's like more green than red and blue. The way a conventional dispel is working is that it needs to understand what means to have more green than necessary. So the first step is to calculate what's the necessary or the limit that any remaining green should be removed. Um, by default, you have a dispel math average, with that, which means that if you are displaying um, one primary, like green, it will calculate just the uh, average between the other two colors, red and blue in this case. So this will be the baseline or the amount of green that if a pixel has, it will just be removed. Uh, this can be set to something other than the average. If you just do maximum, the limit will be here and only this part will be removed. Uh, if you do it at minimum, then it will be this part. So all this will be removed. As you can see, it's something quite arbitrary. You can also set it to custom and then you can really nail the range. Uh, this should be changed visually anyway. Um, and yeah, that will uh, change this selected point up and down towards the minimum and the maximum of the other two channels. Then once we have the baseline limit of color for that specific channel, we can tweak it with the limit. Um, the limit is nothing else than a multiplier for this value here. So if uh, the limit is at one, that means that the green that will be removed is whatever is remaining from this average. If we set the limit to 0 0.9, that will multiply this by 0 0.9, meaning more green will be removed. So then basically if you set the limit to zero, as you can imagine, uh, that means that all the green in the image will be gone. That's the main part of the spilling, and it usually also involves respilling. That means that for whatever part of a color has been removed, that's desaturated, turned into gray, and that amount of gray is added into all three channels in the same amount. And that way, whatever luminance is lost through this building is recovered on all channels. This part is also useful for minimizing uh, grain or, or other artifacts, or you can even multiply this gray or white by any color you need. And that will turn the dispel color into a different color that will help the composite probably. As you can see, the respilling means you are desaturating this amount of green that has been removed. And there's not a unique way of desaturating an image. So here you can select what the color weights for the desaturation will be. Once you have this desaturated version of the dispel, once again, you can multiply it by color and that will allow you to select a different amount of respilling. Okay, so that's pretty much the whole behavior of AP Dispel version one. And I think this is important in order to understand what's changed and uh, the new options you have now. So let's now move into the actual tool and ways to work with it um, and all the updates and stuff. So AP Dispel 2 is already part of Nuke Survival Toolkit since version 2.1.0 and it should be available in Wikipedia quite soon. Here's the main updates in version 2 apart from a quite optimized play script code inside. I think the biggest two updates by far are these two in the top of the tool. One of them is that you can now set the dispel to absolute mode, uh, which means that instead of performing a dispel, it will be performing a keying algorithm. Uh, that means that whatever color you choose, if you respill to zero, a key will be performed with that color. If you output the spill mat in the alpha inverted, that means that you uh, pretty much 
perform the keying operation. So that's not only removing the excess of green in each pixel, but um, the actual color that you selected, it's removing the whole of it in every pixel. So as you can see, um, it's basically a key light that's going on. You see, it's um, literally a key light operation. One of the things that this new workflow enables is that now the respell color will be added in an absolute way. So if we leave uh, respell color to one, then we just change the actual green color for uh, white. This means that the absolute mode can be used for things like um, turning the spill into a specific color, like doing this. And well, you might be used to this kind of workflows from either keylight based uh, workflows or other dispel tools. So this should be treated as uh, two different ways of using this tool. One is the absolute mode, which as you see is uh, pretty much a key algorithm. Good for edges, good for situations where you want to do a dispel to color. Or the relative mode, which is the conventional display algorithm. This is useful for uh, the interior of your subject. Uh, it's useful for whatever you don't want to do such a harsh um, display operation. Just remove the um, yeah the, ex the actual excess of, of a green or a specific color you select. This absolute mode also becomes quite interesting with the second big update on the tool, which is the ability to. Um, turn most of these sliders into image-based inputs. By the way, when you check and uncheck this, nothing is changing inside, so you can just turn it on <laughs> always if you if you prefer. Um, I just exposed the option here to avoid visual clutter for people that uh, will probably just use it like this. But what's the cool part of this? So one of the cool workflows that this enables now is that uh, if you turn on both image-based and absolute mode, as I just explained, this is just performing a key light operation. But instead of using this picked color, let's use an actual image. So in this case, I'm just generating a clean plate via doing a hard mat of the character and an edge extend inside. So here we have a sort of a clean plate. We can use this for the actual color of the this pill. You see now that it's using the color from the input. So this is pretty much an I key light, a key light node with uh, an image based input, sort of like IBK. And that's useful both for keying, like we just did right now, or for dispelling in relative mode. So right now, each pixel is getting dispelled towards the color that we can see here. I think that's pretty powerful. And uh, until now, the only way around this would be to just get different dispels uh, for different colors and just key mix between them or something like that. Uh, if we do that with absolute mode, uh, you can see that now, yeah, it's just a, an IBK sort of operation while keeping all the other uh, dispel tools and being able to still mix between images or use other uh, image-based inputs at the same time. Cool. So now that we understand what an image-based input is in this context, let's see how I encourage to use the new image-based approach to the limit input. Um, let's start now with this other image. Uh, I'll just put an AP dispel again and choose some base color for our dispel. The next part would be to select what's the highest amount of limit that uh, will work for us in some part of the image. Let's just look at this part. As we see, there's quite some color loss going on, so we're sure that this should be higher. Let's keep it at 1.4. Another trick for this is just uh, seeing the spill, and then you can really understand what's going on. For now, just leave it at 1.4. And let's analyze this. So we can see that this part is working. We can see that there's definitely quite some spill going on here. And in other parts of the image, such as the skin tones, uh, we can still see there's a lot of green in the edges. So with the image-based inputs, if we now plug an image into the limit input, this image will act as a multiplier for the limit in an inverse manner. Um, it sounds quite abstract, but I think you will see um, why it makes sense. So I would usually just start by making some roto in the part that I want to affect more. And this roto is now one, which means that this is getting multiplied by zero. Um, so how do you use it? Okay, just make a roto, turn it down to zero, and then you can now gradually increase it until the limit is turned down to the amount that you need in that part of the image. So if we now increase this slightly to 0 0.36, uh, you can see that now the limit in this part is uh, slightly different than it was before. The reason for this is that this is getting inverted, so it's like 1 minus 0 0.3, which is 0 0.64, and that's getting multiplied by that. So the way to understand it is basically that uh, you set the limit that is the highest one you need on the image, and then you start just making alphas, which have um, certain opacity, and that will be limiting this more and more and more. 
So I'll just repeat the process so you understand it better. Just select an area that we want to limit more, then turn it to zero and then slightly increase it until we arrive at the limit that we need. This is quite cool because it's uh, literally a different display algorithm per pixel. So it's not something that would be possible to do um, with the previous version. Let's also tackle this part here, which I think is quite interesting because we might want to do it with a different approach and not a roto. So I'll just take the denoised version of the plate for now. And let's try to generate some sort of uh, key of uh, these tones here. So this could be done with a hue keyer, with a key light or anything else. I tend to use this tool, uh, which is mainly meant for mapping normals, but uh, it works quite well for colors, as you can see. I'll just decrease the radius to something that makes sense. And as you can see, now we have an alpha for these parts here. Let's now merge it with the roto and let's see the result. So you can see that now the limit is effectively turning to zero in this part. So we can just now turn the channel merge mix to zero again and slightly increase it until the limit range for our display goes to a value that we find appropriate. We can also change the actual radius of the key that we are doing. And we should do this probably just visually on the image. Yeah, this seems to work. So uh, you can see that now we just generated this alpha, which is a combination of rotos for parts where we want to decrease the limit and a key with certain opacity, also for driving the limit of the display. And what's cool is the actual combination of multiple image-based inputs. So I'll just repeat this process again with a different plate. Um, just bring AP display, select the color or generate an image-based clean plate or something like that. We can see that this is now working quite well on this part. Skin tones are still super green, so I'll just activate the image-based options, plug in the limit, make a roto. I'll just start with opacity zero, um, the part that we need, and then just dial it up until we arrive at a value that works for us. And that's how we would generate an actual display with a single AP display. Um, this enables each process to be tackled separately instead of having to keep mix between lots of stuff. <laughs> so coming back to the previous plate, let me show you yet another example of the absolute mode uh, respelling. In this case, I'm picking this color of the green and turning it into this color of the jacket. And we can see that it's not working in the upper part. So a quick way of handling this would be to make a root of the character. Then do some quick edge extension to get rid of it and maybe even some blur. That just gave us the overall color of the background and then we can use that as the color input. So the result of this would be that in these parts we are performing the respelling based on an actual proper dispel uh, and not on the dispel of these colors. So this is without the image-based input. Look at this part mainly and this is with the image-based input. So now the dispel is getting driven by this map here. And actually we could even give it a respill image-based input. As you can see, it's similar to the background input of a key light node, which should not be used for actual keying and merging, but I think it's quite useful for the cases where you want to respill with uh, something more complex than this. So in this case, I'll just make a color wheel. Let's make it big and let's use it for the respill. So now the respilling of the image is this color here multiplied by this image here. So if we just leave this one to one, then this will be our respill color. This is especially useful when we want to um, generate on the inside of the uh, foreground any colors coming from the actual plate. Um, I would not recommend this, as I said, to composite the foreground over the background because I think a merge node is free and gives us more uh, control over that. But for any case where you want to drive the respill color to something more complex than a single value, then this uh, input might turn useful again. So now that everything is in place, I'll just go back to the limit thing and start tweaking my image until it looks great. Okay, I think that was pretty much everything I want to uh, explain about the main two features in this tool, image-based mode and absolute mode. And let's now move to another feature that was added in version two. It's not meant to be used by everyone. I barely use it actually, but it's a workflow that uh, many compositors use and find useful. So it's about this color space options you can see here. And this is how you're meant to use it. Uh, you can start by, again, just selecting a color that works for the image and then a perfect display will be generated for that tone. And then the workflow consists of the following. 
So if you just come to the white point or the color gamut part of the color space and press the keys page up or page down, that will switch between different white point conversions or primary conversions in a kind of sandwich way where it's doing it before and after the dispelling. So many times it just helps getting nicer dispelling in any tones you need. And you can even activate this to do a lean to log and log to lean conversion. So this should really be treated as an artistic thing. There's nothing that makes mathematical sense about converting from sRGB to white gamut in this context, but um, as it's a conversion that's going in one direction and then in the opposite, the only actual change that's making it's a visual in this case. So don't worry about it. You can still use it if you are in an ASUS workflow or working in any color space. Uh, don't feel limited by these options here. As I said, this is just meant for toggling between options and seeing if uh, one of them turns your display color into something that uh, is closer to what you need. So I wanted to thank Tony Lyons for the input on this part, especially because that's something that he's using a lot and lots of people are using. And I think it's laid out in a way that makes sense. You're really not forced to use it. And that's pretty much the main update tool. So as I mentioned, you also have a REC 2020 math for desaturation for the spill, which is useful both in REC 2020 primaries working and in SSCG working space. So yeah, enjoy the tool. Let me know if anything breaks. Uh, remember, if you just bring it by default, it should work just the same way the previous one did. So uh, I think it can probably safely be replaced and it should be also more efficient in the code. So thanks for watching and see you in the next one.